2019 began as a year of growing my tarot and oracle collection, and new decks were coming in by the box full. Yet when I look back at what I have accumulated over the last year, I found that some of my most meaningful decks were the ones I hemmed and hawed over purchasing. Hello, it's Dawn Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today I'll be sharing with you my top tarot decks from 2019. This prompt comes from Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot Community Challenge, which was the event where I launched my channel last year, so I really wanted to participate this year. However, I'll only be doing a couple of the prompts. Since a lot of the prompts are a bit similar to videos I've done over the course of the last year, I wanted to really just focus in on those few that gave me something new to share. So to start us off, let's talk about the top tarot decks of 2019. So one of the first decks that I bought in January of 2019 is the Art of Love Tarot. And this is a tarot deck that really surprised me. And it was one that I went back and forth about because while I like the artwork for the most part, there are a couple of cards in here that kind of missed the mark a little bit for me. And I wasn't sure that I was really going to work with it and be able to connect to it. What I didn't expect was to actually connect with this deck and to enjoy working with it in the way that I do. So this is a deck that I've actually trimmed and edged and I do have a video of this on my channel. When I trimmed this deck down, the bag that I had originally made for it was way too big. It was like swimming around in there. So I decided to um, just throw it on my desk until I had time to create a bag. Well, what I found was that when it was sitting on my desk, at the end of the day, um, or at the end of my work time, I should say, I would grab this deck and I would do just a simple three card reading. And I would look at the, um, the tarot associations, of course, but really what I was tapping into was these keywords. And that for me is, was really just a surprise in how I ended up um, working with this deck. And it's really a surprise that the cards that I thought were really going to give me pause in this deck um, really have not impeded me from working with it. And really, since I've trimmed it, it, it works all the better for me. Um, it's just beautiful artwork. I love the colors. It's very soft. It's very gentle, but it does also have some depth to it. And that's something that I wasn't really expecting from this deck. So that is definitely one that um, I would consider in my top for this year because I ended up using it way more than I thought I was going to. And um, it's one that has consistently stayed on my work desk and I just have been called to pull cards from it pretty much every working day after I'm done with my, um, with my work for the day. So that is the Art of Love Tarot, and that is one of the first decks that I purchased in January of 2019. So the next deck on my list for top decks for 2019 is the Dark Goddess Tarot. Now this deck is currently out of print, but I have heard that it has been picked up by, I believe, Schiffer, and that it will be um, available mass market at some point. This is a deck that I picked up in February of 2019, and it's a deck that I went back and forth with. It was kind of like one of those things that was almost like a FOMO moment. Um, I really, I knew that these decks, the um, Ellen Lorenzi Prince decks tend to, to be very popular and they go out of print fairly quickly. And I missed out on Tower of the Crown. And so I was a little bit afraid that I was going to miss out on this deck if I didn't kind of jump on it um, when I had the chance. Although to be perfectly honest, I went back and forth about it for a couple of months before I finally did. I think I started looking at this deck at the end of 2018 and um, I just kind of went back and forth about whether or not I was actually going to be able to work with it, going to be able to connect with it. Um, I think I've mentioned before, this is my favorite card in the deck, which the Five of Cups is usually never one of my favorite cards, but it is in this deck. Here's the title card for it. And it's one of the ones that kind of surprised me because I wasn't really sure if I was going to be able to make that connection to it. And turns out that I was able to. And now it's a deck that I'm really um, interested in working with quite a bit more deeply um, in 2020. And it's, there's just something about this artwork that just really, uh, really appeals to me. Um, and I do hope that the Tarot of the Crone will be released mass market as well so I can get a copy of that. So that is the Dark Goddess Tarot. And speaking of FOMO decks, this is 
This is the Tildwig Tarot, and this is the next deck on my list for top decks for 2019. And I'm I'm not really sure that this one is so much a surprise. Um, actually, I I guess it is a surprise because it's a very beautiful deck, but it's got a lot of texture and a lot of layers in the imagery, and that can sometimes make it really hard to figure out what is going on in these cards. But really what I found for this deck is that um, it lends itself really well for meditation. So I like to pull one of these cards, just one, and really sit and do some deep meditation with it and some path working. Um, and things of that nature. It surprised me because it's a deck that I don't really use for full-blown readings. It's more of a deck that I use for meditation. I pull one card and I really don't pay a whole lot of attention to the um, Tarot Association, although sometimes that does play, play a role in my um, experience with it, but it's more about the artwork and more about the feeling that this deck evokes, which kind of, again, is another surprise about this deck that it did really evoke, it does evoke feeling. And I think that's really interesting because without there being people, we might think that maybe this might be a deck of, um, you know, that doesn't really connect on an emotional level. But for me, it, it actually does. There's a lot of depth to these images and I think there's a lot to dive into which is I think what makes it a great deck for meditation. So this is definitely one of my top decks of 2019 and it was a surprise because in the way I ended up using it which is primarily as a meditation deck. So that is the Tildwick Tarot. So another deck that was a surprise for me was the Moonchild Tarot. Now I bought this deck in March of 2019 and again, it's a deck that I really went back and forth about. Um, I really have some issues with some of the cards. I will be perfectly honest, I just do. Um, and I have some issue with some of the, the collaging, the photo manipulation that's in this deck. But then there are cards like this that just really are beautiful and powerful and really speak to me. And when I went through the deck, when I did my... Um, in-depth dive with this deck, my in-depth work with it, it really helped to, to solidify my connection to this deck and it really helped me to kind of move beyond some of those surface things to really get um, below the surface to the what was what was powerful underneath. And I think this is a very powerful deck. Um, it's definitely one that's more attuned to like spiritual type readings for me. Um, readings about the higher self. I think it works beautifully for that, although I could definitely see this being a deck that would work quite well for general readings. I, I also struggle with, I'm probably going to be the only one in the world to say this, but I struggle with this super thick cardstock. I really don't like it. I love that it's matte. Um, I have left the extra cards in this deck. There's a Moonchild card and a Shadow Self card, I believe. Um, I've done a lot of work with this Tower card in particular, but um, now we're gonna, I'm, because I'm babbling, I totally forgot what I was saying. Anyway, oh, the cardstock. Yeah, I do have, I have some issue with the cardstock. It's really big and bulky and it's hard for me to work with. And sometimes that does make me not want to work with this deck because I'm like, oh, it's such a pain to shuffle. And I am, I'm a riffle shuffler, but even to overhand this deck, like I have to divide it in half to be able to overhand it effectively. So I'm doing half the deck and then half the deck. And it's just, yeah. Anyway, those nitpicky things aside, cause now that's just, I'm just being ridiculous, but. Um, those nitpicky things aside, I really do like this deck and it's one that um, it really kind of surprised me that I did enjoy working with it and reading with it because of some of those issues that I have that, that tend to kind of trip me up along the way. Um, you know, in particular, these, these court cards just really miss the mark for me. But that's not something that really deters me from working with the deck. I can I can get past that. Um, I love the color palette in this deck. It's so beautiful. I mean, look at this. That's gorgeous. Gorgeous color palette. Um, the production value on this deck is, is phenomenal. I, I mean, I will say that. I'm not a fan of this thick cardstock, but that's just personal preference. It's hard for me to work with. This is a chunky deck, but overall, I think it's a beautiful deck, and I do really enjoy working with it, which was quite a bit of a, su a surprise for me. So again, another surprise for 2019, but one that 
um, definitely ended up being a deck that I worked with quite frequently. And that is the Moonchild Tarot. So if I had to pick one deck that was going to be my surprise deck or my dark horse deck for 2019, it would be this deck. And that is the Tarot de St. Croix. This is a deck that I really, again, I went back and forth with. I have some issues with some of the cards. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, as they say, if you want a perfect tarot deck, you better make it yourself because that's the only way you're going to ever get a perfect tarot deck for you. But overall, I, I really do like this deck. I love the artwork. For the most part, there are a couple of cards that um, I kind of struggle to connect with, but they really haven't stopped me from working with this deck at all. Um, I what it, One of the things that I really appreciate the, about this deck is that the um, creator approaches the tarot very numerologically, which is the way that I read tarot. And so I really do enjoy that about this deck. It reads beautifully for me. It's just one that I get really consistent, really wonderful readings. I absolutely love this Wheel of Fortune. One of my favorite cards in the deck. This whole idea of diving through the deep, coming back up around the other side. It's just lovely. If you read the guidebook, the guidebook for this deck is one of the... Um, it's kind of funny because in some ways it actually really solidified my connection to this deck. And in some ways with some particular cards it kind of detracted a little bit because um, there are several cards. This is one of them that the creator has pulled in real people. And I believe that this is one of her sons. And for me, when you make that personal of a connection to it, it makes it hard for me to make a personal connection to it. Because now every time I see this page of swords, I think of the creator's son and it makes it hard for me to make my own personal connection to it. And there's just a couple of cards in the deck that are like that. Um, but this artwork is just really stunning and I really enjoy working with it. It's been just one that's just really kind of surprised me and I really do like the color palette. Um, I wasn't sure of these orange borders and they've kind of grown on me. It's one of those things that like as soon as I got the deck, I was like, oh yeah, those borders, they're coming off. But once I started working with it, I don't know, it kind of just, it's part of the energy of the deck now. It's part of the deck's personality, I feel like. So I think I am going to keep them because it feels like it's just, it is a part of the deck. They're not, it's a weird thing. It's hard to explain. I do need to edge it. I want to find an orange color, of course, because, you know, it's orange. So anyway, enough rambling about that one. That is the Tarot de St. Croix which is another deck, I think the most surprise deck for me this year. Another of my top decks this year, and yes, I know I am way over my five. Actually, I think I'm only two over my five. I think I have seven total to show you. So me, yeah, I cheated a little. And this is the Wooden Tarot, and uh, I love my favorite chariot card is on top. I just absolutely love this chariot card. Oh, look, there's, I must've put some of my favorite cards on top. There's the High Priestess. She's another one of my favorites. This is a deck that, again, I went back and forth about whether or not I really wanted it. It was another one of those that I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to read with it. It's very pippish, which tends to work for me. I like pip style decks, but it has that really surreal element to it that I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to get on with. And to be perfectly honest, the, the amount of eyeballs in this deck I really not a huge fan of, of eyeballs and like here's this crow or this raven with all these like eyeballs on its back like it's totally creepy but it really it really works for me it helps me to kind of step outside my comfort zone and I just really like the surreal nature of um, this deck for me when I step outside that sort of writer weight mentality or that writer weight tradition and I really step into the more numerological aspect that's where this deck really shines for me which I really like I love this card too it's one of my favorites um so this deck for me really allows me to kind of embrace that love of um, numerological readings and elemental readings and that's really what this deck does for me it allows me to just really dive deep into that and that's where those um, connections, I think, come. And it's just such a gorgeous little deck. Look at that temperance. I mean, yeah, he's got the third eye, but he's still super cute. The moon was one that I kind of struggled with for a while. It was interesting. Um, but yeah, just I, I really, really do like it, even though it's kind of weird and it's kind of out there. And it definitely 
um, makes you think about things in a different light, which I actually do quite appreciate. And I think this is a good deck to really kind of shake up your tarot practice. If you feel like you're kind of getting a little too routine in your readings, a deck like this will really kind of help shake things up because it's going to ask you to look at things in a different light. And I think that's really gorgeous. It has a happy squirrel. I love decks that have a happy squirrel card. It's just fun. So yeah, beautiful deck. Um, this judgment's super weird. Took me a while to come to come to terms with that one as well. But so yeah, just another deck that was kind of a surprise in that I liked it as well as I did. I thought I was gonna have much more trouble reading with it than I have, but it's been one that's been a pretty consistent reader for me, and I've really enjoyed working with it. So that is the wooden tarot. And the last tarot deck on my list is my little white sage tarot in a tin. One of my favorite Queen of Pentacles. I love the Pentacle Court in this deck. Um, this is a deck that, again, very, very pippish, which I actually really, really like, but I'm usually not a huge fan of animal decks. Now, this one isn't, you know, specifically an animal deck. There are animals in the courts and there are some animals in the um, Major Arcana, but it is primarily a pip deck. And for me, this deck is just a super nurturing um really soft, really gentle, like I said, nurturing kind of deck. Um, it's kind of like my, my little, my little mantra deck or my little meditation deck, even though it's not really a deck that I use for meditations, but it is a deck that just kind of allows me to just take a minute, take a breath and kind of reconnect with the moment. So that's how this, this deck really reads for me and tends to be how I use it. And again, it's another one that surprised me because I wasn't really sure that I was going to get on with these images, um, particularly because the court cards have a little bit different association than, than I normally would make. But and I just, I love these pippish styles. I mean, how beautiful. Anyway, this is just one of those decks that for me is just, it, it connects on kind of that heart level um, really look at that hermit. Isn't he cute? It's really just kind of like, yeah, my breather deck. It's just tells me stop, take a moment, let things calm down and let's just take a look at what's going on right now. And I think that's really wonderful about this deck is it's just, it's ability to help you gain some space and some perspective from whatever might be going on. And it's a wonderful deck just to pull if you just need like a quiet moment just to kind of reconnect with yourself, your body, your breath. Take this deck and pull a card. I do it all the time with this deck. It's just wonderful for that. So that is the last deck in my top tarot decks for 2019. And that is the White Sage Tarot in a Tin. Although I won't be doing the whole 31 days of this challenge, I am really enjoying watching everyone else's videos. And I want to thank Ethany for putting together another wonderful community event. I hope you enjoyed this look at my top tarot decks from 2019 and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.